Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 271 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, the final episode before my surgery. This is a special episode today. I'm going to record the first uh, 30 or 40 minutes of this podcast. Then I have an appointment with uh, the dentist to put my expander in the roof of my mouth, and I will complete the podcast with that in my mouth for the first time, and, and we'll all get to see what potentially I'll sound like. So the expander is a thing that goes in the roof of my mouth and uh and i think it's it's gonna make me very very fucking lispy so i hope you're all excited to hear that uh we've got rosie and zach here as well hello Hello. um because uh they won't be heard from for for weeks uh we've we've pre-recorded a bunch of uh, episodes uh that that should just about cover my recovery i think so i don't think the podcast is actually going to disappear for very long uh, and if it does, we might release, uh, maybe we'll release a Patreon episode to cover the final week. Uh, speaking of, you can support the show and everything that we're doing uh, over on Patreon. Jazz is going to be uh, posting a bunch of like recovery uh, vlogs in there and photos and, and updates about my recovery process that we maybe wouldn't post to Instagram. So check that out and it would really really help out the team while uh, obviously, you know, I can't work and I'm spending a bunch of money to get my head chopped in half. Um I've had a uh, very productive last two weeks. We've been going crazy just trying to just shoot as much stuff as humanly possible to make sure that the the content doesn't stop for you guys. Because I was kind of thinking that, oh, I'm probably going to disappear for a few weeks, but then it seems like we won't, probably. No, we have a few guest episodes, obviously, and then mm. some terrible TV reaction videos as well as possibly a stunt video coming out soon yes yeah so we should be okay we should be okay and uh and hopefully i'll i'll learn how to talk i am nervous about the people keep asking me if i'm if i'm nervous about the surgery i'm kind of not i feel like i haven't um thought about it yet i've just (laughs) i've just been like focusing on doing all of this stuff and i reckon like when i just before they they put me under i might go Hang on, do I really want to do this? And then I'll be out, and then and then I'll wake up and I'll be chopped in half. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. I'm 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 up for like TV show recommendations because I think that's going to be the only thing I'll be able to do. My mum's coming over for the first four days. Sorry, the the, the electrician turned the power off. Uh, we're getting a bunch of stuff done to to prepare for moving the entire studio. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I'll only be able to sit upright for a whole week. No lying down, no nothing like that. I hope, I really hope I'll be able to breathe because I already know that I can't breathe through my nose. It's not something that I've ever been able to do. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be really fucked up and swollen and I won't be able to wear the CPAP machine when I'm asleep because it'll be too painful. So I'm. I hope I'll. I hope I'll be able to breathe when I'm asleep. Otherwise, it'll be just like a week of no sleep, sitting upright, which will be fun. Um, I'll be able to blast through a lot of episodes of Naruto. That's pretty good. That's a lot nice little benefit of that. I'm gonna try and see if I can smash through as much of that as possible. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it'll. I think it'll be. It, it's. It'll be an interesting thing. I know. I probably feels like I've been talking about this for fucking ages because I have. Um, but it's uh, been very all-consuming for all of us here of like trying to get ready for it and trying to make sure that I'm okay and we have content and we don't disappear for ages. But uh, yeah, man, it's all it's all happening. We've started, you know, I'm, I'm not going to officially announce it, but we have started booking a tour as well for what we hope will be September, October, if we can get those dates and if I am recovered enough to do them, we'll hopefully you know be able to do those shows and it's going well we kind of decided i really want to have a big year next year because obviously this year is not going to be huge because of the surgery and kind of we're trying to bounce back from COVID and reset but i think next year can be really big and i think the key to that is just filming as many stand-up clips as possible and getting that out there so we can kind of blow up on tiktok on instagram on youtube with stand-up and to do that when you can't really do a big tour this year, we've decided to kind of cheat. And what we're going for is instead of what I did last year, which was say Brisbane, I did 600 people across two shows, two 300 seaters. Instead of doing that this year, we've actually gone for, well, let's just do 600, 700 people again, 
but let's just do it across like eight shows in an 80 seater and film all of them. That way we'll get a bunch of clips. We'll get to shoot all of the shows. The crowd work will be crazy. It'll be a lot more intimate, a lot smaller. um, And we'll get like volume of shows, which means volume of crowd work, which means hopefully if we can pull off this tour this year, we'll be able to post like stand up clips all the way up until next year's comedy festival like two, three times a week is kind of what we're planning on doing. That and bringing back Real Talk, I think will really kind of blow us up on all those short short form content platforms that I think we're really missing at the moment. And that's, you know, obviously because of COVID and everything like that and, and now these surgeries. But I think that we're really kind of planning to reset. So for the next for the next four or five weeks or so, there's going to be a bunch of like reaction videos and all that kind of stuff that that we're doing because uh, because obviously we want, we want to cover the break. But I think when we come back, we're going to really like reset. We're moving all of the film sets into the garage. The podcast is going to look a lot better. We're going to bring back Bi-Monthly Bull, uh, yeah, believe it or not, uh, and do it properly. Uh, we're bringing on a new person onto the team to help us with these stand-up clips and this short-form stuff. And we, we really just want to get back to, to, to just making really, really good shit and we kind of had our first taste of that yesterday um where we like i felt i felt I was saying to the team like, i felt like we finally got to do the thing do a thing that we planned and then we got to do it do exactly what we wanted with that plan rather than oh let's plan this cool thing and then it gets fucked up by surgeries or covert or this or that um we finally got it we did this amazing photo shoot uh for something that's coming next year uh, we got uh, we managed to get me and two other adult girls with braces uh, in the photo shoot, and we got to work with Simon Schiff, who's just an absolute monster behind the camera. He's got his own photo studio, and we created these amazing, incredible, hilarious photos that are just going to come out really, really well. And Rosie was there, like filming behind the scenes vlogs and getting like artsy, like frantic shots of it, similar to like music rap videos which is what the vibe that we were going for and it was just it was just awesome we had we had everything that we needed there and now we've got like zach on the team who's like a freak graphic designer uh and we can kind of keep everything in house again i feel like a lot of my stuff has just been given to other people who haven't been doing it with care now we can kind of consolidate it bring it all back in which is how i've always kind of done things is like doing it all independently we've got a guy that's like booking the shows and that's like under my direction rather than giving it to other companies which i never really like doing uh and i think yeah you know it's going to take a it's going to take a a bit of a ramp up and a bit of a charge up for us but once we come back once i'm recovered once we've moved everything into the new studio and set up and got all of the new gear and trained a new person and we're ready to go and my brain works and i'm sleeping it's uh it's going to be over for everybody else in this country we're really going to kind of show I guess what 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 I've always kind of been is the the being a bit of an innovator. I I was uh, I'm excited for people to start copying me again. <laughs> is really what I'm excited to do. So yeah man, I'm you know it's been a lot uh but uh this is the this is the I feel like this is one of the last steps. Obviously I have the second surgery, but that doesn't have to happen urgently. Um like it's not like the second surgery can happen when my teeth are finished moving. So uh, it really is just like, if we have to, we could postpone it. It's not going to be like this one where I have to do it now, uh, even though I, even when I would rather kind of be doing all of the videos and all the touring that I would like to. The second one can happen on our time. So I think that we'll really kind of, once I'm recovered, we'll be able to go and we just won't have to stop, which is what I've been really sick of doing is like stopping or doing what we can or what's realistic or going with good enough. I'm really kind of sick of good enough. I want to, I want to do stuff well. And so does everyone. We're all kind of very motivated to get through this last roadblock and make some really cool shit. We're going to completely change how Spearhead Sundays looks, uh, which we were talking about today and, and uh, how it's recorded and everything. And yeah, man, I think it's going to be good with Luke and Lewis ending as sad as that is. It's going to be good for all of the Lewis Spears stuff because we can truly properly focus on that. It'll mean more guests on Spearhead Sundays because I think with Luke and I both, when we have when we would meet a comedian or a creator or, or like a known person, 
both of us would be like, man, you have to do Luke and Lewis. Now, obviously, Luke and Lewis doesn't exist, so we'll, it'll be like, man, you got to do Spearhead Sunday. So that's an upside of it. Um, we've already had a bunch of guests on the show, and they've been really fun. Those will be coming out over the break. And, uh, yeah, I think we're just uh, very excited to kind of get back to creating really, really fucking well done good stuff we're going to be writing every week we're going to we're going to basically going to take that luke and lewis day and turn it into just a writing day because i think i haven't really been writing videos for a very long time other than that one bi-monthly ball that we put out that i was really really happy with but then worked out oh wait if i have to do these surgeries why should i even start this series again if it's going to get all fucked up by that so when i'm back we're going to restart it again and I'm going to read all of the other comments like, oh, see you in four months. And I'll get angry at them and then realize, no, they actually have a, a lot of reasons to believe that. Um, and I actually reconfirmed that with the previous episode. So look, man, all I'm saying is it's a little bit frustrating to work a long time on a news show and then release it when Russia invades Ukraine and you don't even mention it. That's that's a little <laughs> bit annoying. And, and, and everyone goes, oh, oh, really, Lewis, you're talking about news that happened uh, a week ago, how, how interesting. Excuse me while I uh, engage in what could be World War Three. Sorry for not watching your cute little video about the news when when I'm watching World War Three unfold. I'm worried about being drafted, not your stupid little jokes. So hopefully, you know, well, I, chances are by the time I actually release the next bi-monthly bull, fucking China will be invading Taiwan and, we, and it really will be World War Three. You guys excited for that one? Not so much. You don't want to get drafted, Zach? Not particularly. You I don't have, think you have a body strength to be drafted. You don't think you could kill a man? Oh God, no. <laughs> no? Well, look, man, this is what I'm saying. Uh, Taiwan is going to get invaded soon. Uh, China China reckons they would like a little bit of Taiwan. They're, they're telling all of their rich people to start uh, selling their assets and get ready for sanctions because they've kind of looked at what Russia did with Ukraine and was like, oh, nothing really happens. Nothing happens when you just take a country you've always wanted to take, you know? Obviously, you, you lose a lot of soldiers, but other than that, nothing really happens. The price of petrol goes up, but that's not really because of sanctions. That's because the oil companies like making more money. So let's just fucking take Taiwan. America's come out and they've said, oh, well, if you guys take Taiwan, we will defend it militarily. And China's gone, well, we'll see. So I'm excited for World War Three. That'll come out uh, as soon as uh, the next bi-monthly bull episode does because apparently that series is the Herald of Doom. Um, so that's uh, what I'm looking forward to. More school shootings in, in America, of course. Uh, the shit's fucking crazy, man. I saw Joe Biden send out a bunch of tweets as the president of America after like a national tra tragedy and he's gone... What did he say? He said... Uh, he said, where am I? What's my name? Um, he wrote, uh, he goes, I'm sick and tired of it. We have to act. Then do it, bro. You're the president. You're the fucking guy. If you want to do it, don't send out a fucking tweet. Like, oh, he goes, when in God's name will we stand up to the gun lobby? When in God's name will we do what needs to be done? I'm sick and tired of it. We have to act. Okay, do it. He doesn't say, so I'm doing this. Or we have to act, so I will. He's said nothing. He's gone, he ended his thing. I started reading it as he was tweeting it. I'm going, oh my God, they're going to like do something. And he just sends out two more tweets. He goes, oh, it's terrible, blah, blah. I asked the nation to, pl to pray for the parents to give them strength in the darkness. And then he goes, these types of mass shootings never happen, rarely happen uh, elsewhere in the world. Why are we willing to live with the carnage? Why do we keep letting this happen? Where in God's name is our backbones to have the courage to deal with it? It's time to turn this pain into action. Who are you talking to, man? Who are you? That's like me going, oh, someone should film some videos. It's like me looking at Rosie and being like, when are we going to release something good? When are we going to film something funny? When are we going to do it? It's it's when how, I'm sick and tired of sitting here and not filming videos. Wouldn't you agree, Rosie? Yes. Well, when are we going to do something about that? When you do something about that. What do you mean when I do so? When are you going to do something about this? Who could who could possibly make a change? 
in, in the business that I run, who on earth is going to do the... Vi- when are we going to do another show? When? Zach, when are we doing a show? And hey, that's your call, am I? I? That's not the question that I asked you. I said, <laughs> when are we, we going to have the courage to book a show? When are we going to do it? You answer the question with a question. I have no idea. <laughs> Well, that's not good enough, okay? So I guess we're just going to never do a show. Is that what you're saying to me? You don't have an answer? We're just never going to do a show? Fine, that's good with me. I'm going to continue to accept donations from the NRA. I mean, like, don't... It's Like, say nothing instead. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't say, oh, we should do something. It's like you're the fucking president, so come up with at least an option that I would hate. Do you know what I mean? Like I would love, I would rather hear a bad idea than oh, when are we gonna do something? Do something, do something, shit. You know? I don't know. I think that I think that uh, that whole stuff is like I kind of agree on the the. I'm on the side of like, hey, you don't really need guns that kill people. You know? Have your hunting guns. Have your handguns. Even do we need the do we need the fucking AR-15s? Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure. I'm not so sure we do, um, but I don't know. I just think I just think that as long as money is in politics, that that shit will never change. And the NRA has too much money, so it, it's it's going to have to come down to politicians being less greedy. And when have they ever done that? Do you know what I mean? A lot of these Americans are like, oh, they're this is about they're trying to take away our freedoms. It's not. It's not really. Do you know what I mean? Like the it's the guns aren't with the American people because you have the best country and the most free country in the world. You have them because giant corporations that make billions and billions and billions of dollars uh, every year want you to have them and want you to keep buying them. That's what it. That's what it is. You know, it's uh it's about the the military industrial complex making a little bit of extra money on the side by selling you a fucking rocket launcher you don't need. <laughs> that's that's what it all comes down to. It's not about keeping you free. It's about uh, parting you with your money, and that's why all of this, all of these uh, arguments, always devolve into like this, this, is, this is how this shit's gonna go. It's gonna go. Oh, this tragedy is so terrible. We need to ban machine guns, and then some guy will go. Well, actually, uh, that an AR-15 is not a machine gun. And then it will turn into the the fucking everyone arguing over the specifics of the type of gun that was used, and then everyone forgets why, like why we were even fighting, you know. But basically, what every single gun control argument it devolves into like arguing over spelling and grammar, you know. Like when you see two people have an argument over something that truly matters, and then someone you know, has a typo and then they start arguing over the typo instead of the actual thing. That's what happens with every fucking gun rights argument in America is everyone starts arguing over the specifics and type of gun that was used rather than, oh, should we try and solve this heinous issue? So, oh, it's like someone, someone uh, uneducated on guns will go, oh, I just really don't think that we should let, you know, people walk into a school with an assault rifle 15. And then someone will go, well, actually, it stands for armor light rifle, not assault rifle. And then someone goes, well, okay, I understand that I got the AR bit wrong, but I still don't think that whatever it's called, we should let someone be able to walk into a school with it. And he goes, no, 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 no. I can't listen to you now because you didn't know what the AR st- stood for. And that's what this will be. And if you check the comments underneath this, uh, that's what this will be. Because people will go, oh, well, actually, Lewis, he didn't use AR-15s. He used a handgun. So, all right. Well, I'm I'm sure that'll make the parents feel better. Um, Look, here's what I think. I think that we should all, as Australians, have a look at what's happening in America and go, sucks to be you guys. Sucks to be you. We just elected our Anthony Albanese, who, who, who will surely do no wrong. We're in the honeymoon period of our new of, of our new leader where he hasn't made a mistake yet. How good is it? How fucking good is it to not have a guy who's just done a series of the most fuck stupid lazy decisions you've ever had? I mean, I'm not saying that Anthony Albanese won't do that. I'm saying that right now he hasn't. Just just the same as when uh, when uh, when Scotty when his first in his first two days, I was like, man, this guy's great. He hasn't fucked up yet. Day three, I changed my opinion. I wonder how long it'll be before I change my opinion on Anthony. I think this is where we all get a little bit too comfortable, right? The last guy was such a fucking dickhead that everyone voted him out. And now everyone's like, yeah, this guy's great. He's not great, 
Okay? Yet. He hasn't he hasn't shown us greatness. He just got the job. He just got here. Right? He's not bad. He's not great. He's just not the other guy. I think everyone goes, oh, man, this guy is so good. He's not that guy. Don't get excited about Anthony because he hasn't shown us who he is just yet. You know? I like the fact that he was born poor. I like that a lot more than having a rich guy in charge. A guy who was born poor and then becomes prime minister, he's pretty much seen every type of person. He's seen all of the poor people and then he's got his job and he's seen all the middle class people and now he's hanging out with rich people. So he's seen what Australia is for the most part, you know? I don't think that he's seen any hot people. I don't think he's ever gone on a date with a really hot person. But when did hot people need representation? As a future hottie, I don't think that these people need rights. They already have everything handed to them on the silver platter. Hot people don't have problems. They have hotness, all right? They, they have, uh, oh, oh, this, 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 uh, this chick didn't really care about who I was. That's that's the biggest hot person's problem. Is oh, I, I, this this guy is just using me because I'm hot. That's the biggest. It's and it is a problem. I'm not saying that it's not a problem, but I am saying on the scale of problem, it's kind of it's not near the top. Do you know what I mean? It's down somewhere near the bottom. Okay. So I'm not so fussed with the idea that Anthony Albanese has never hung out with a bunch of tens because I don't think that they need to be represented because they already get more rights than the rest of us, all right? What I am saying is, I don't think that we should be too excited. This I, Every time I see people start losing their mind, and I was happy, all right? Because that other, those other blokes ruined my life for two years, okay? Oh, it's because of the lockdowns. No, it's because they didn't fucking answer their email from Pfizer, okay? Let's be real. All they had to do was, like... That's some shit that I do at what my job. I'm a comedian. It's not a catastrophe for two years when I don't answer my emails. I just miss out on a brand deal from Raid Shadow Legends, all right? Which, to be honest, is probably a great thing for you guys, you know? You're not going to be getting brand deals. Speaking of, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The best ball bag trimmer in the game. I fucking got you, didn't I? You thought I was going to talk about something else? We're talking about balls and pubes and getting rid of them. Manscaped.com is the best, uh, sells the best uh, ball bag trimmer in the game, the Lawnmower 4.0. They also have nose hair trimmers. They've got it all. They've got ball deodorant. I've, I, I mean, I mean, look, I'm not saying that I've used it. I'm not saying that I've ever looked down at my balls and gone, fuck, those stink. But I'm sure that a few of you listeners do and have thought that, and there's a solution out there for you. Sort out those stinky nuts. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS, 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0, I trimmed my beard with it before the photo shoot, and I looked at the photos and they look great. I thought, this is awesome. This is amazing. This is great. And I can use code SPEARS with 20% off and free shipping. The best personal groomer in the game. Jeez, we're coming up at... uh, 20 minutes here. We've only got 10 minutes left before I leave. Did you hear that? I said 10 minutes left. This is this is the, the braces, man. I'm already struggling. I'm, I'm doing pretty good, but when I speak for more than 20 minutes, that's when I really start to get fatigued because I've just, I realize that I'm really trying to say things with the braces in. So a lot of people were like, oh, I haven't really noticed a difference in how you sound. And neither have I, but I've definitely noticed a difference in the way that I speak which gives me hope for the spacer, you know? I hope that I'll be able to talk around it. But one of the girls at the photo shoot, she said she had a spacer and she worked in a customer-facing job and she said she went to work and then then she tried to talk to a co-worker uh, day one of having a spacer and uh, he couldn't understand her and she cried and went home. So... (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Yeah, that sucks. So that'll be... uh, That might be me in 10 minutes' time. I'm going to go, hey, guys, welcome to the Spearhead Sunday, and then I'll start crying, and then you won't see me for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely possible. So, look, I don't know. I think that, I, I think that I'll be able to do it. I, I, are you excited for my space at Jazz? Jazz just walked in. Welcome. Um, I know our anniversary is coming up, but I was just rethinking our relationship. Right. Yeah. Come talking to the microphone. Uh. No, that's okay. I'm okay. just going to slowly phase myself out of your life, yep. depending on how this space goes this afternoon. All right. It's going to be a very stressful 10 minutes, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to leave it there, uh, and I'm going to go and get my spacer, 
And then, uh, yeah, this it, it, look. Let me. I'll tell you this: if you have a look at your your phone right now, if the podcast goes for fifty minutes, it's not as bad as I think it is. If the podcast goes for thirty minutes, it's terrible. <laughs> and we'll see. All right, I'll check back in. Give me, well. I, for me, a couple hours. For you, a little bit of time. I'm going to record the Patreon episode of the podcast before I get the spacer, uh, just in case. So we're going to record the Patreon episode. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and get my spacer, and I'll talk to you in two seconds. Two seconds later. Okay, so Lewis has just had his expander in, and he's going to talk for the first time on record now. Say, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. Welcome, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this is fucking awful. Uh, say Sally sells seashells. Sally sells. <laughs> Sally sells six. See, Sally sells seashells. Oh my god, ah! <laughs> this is awful. So I have the ex- I have the expander put in the roof of my mouth, and I sound I sound like I'm fucking I sound deaf. Hey guys, welcome to Spearhead Sundays. This isn't fun. It's painful. It takes up. Look at this. Can you zoom in on the camera? At what's in my mouth right now? Look at this. If they all have all of our visual uh, viewers on you on you on YouTube. Oh my god. Look at that. Can you see? It's this thing that's wrapped around um, four of my teeth on the side. And uh, it's in the roof of my mouth on the same level that my teeth are. I'm kind of getting it now. I sound really good. Mm. Man, the braces didn't really make any effect. This is really difficult. I can't swallow. And I also can't really say swallow either. You don't sound that bad. Oh, uh, I reckon I sound kind of retarded. Honestly. <laughs> the first thing my mum said when we said you're mm. going to do the podcast, he goes... How is he going to do the podcast when he sounds like that? Oh, good. That yeah. gives me a lot of faith. So it's just an outsider's opinion. I right, on the on the Objective. on the plus side, at least I'm also going to um, get decapitated on Friday. So there's something to look forward to. If it makes you feel better. I listen to YouTubers with way worse speaking abilities than you. Who speaks worse than me right now? You know, like I like to watch like weird uh, documentaries about obscure things, and sometimes it's yeah. just a guy who can't even speak. English. Yeah, they're like, unfortunately, you're the only expert we could find. <laughs> I can't, do, you, do you hear that expert? Yeah, actually, you think you sound worse than you do. I don't think it's that bad. Maybe it's because it sounds, I, it feels, it's so much harder. It's so much harder to talk. I can't touch the roof of my mouth with my tongue. What do you guys think? It's not as bad as what I thought it would be. You guys. It's still noticeable. <laughs> okay, you it's wait for the funny. fucking comments. Oh, it's really funny. Oh, well, thanks, Roji. Everyone's laughing at me. That makes <laughs> right, me your, S's, your S's are fucked. Yeah. yeah. My S's are fucked. My S's. Um, it's not my uh, expert. Uh, I think I'll be able to get the hang of it. You know what it is? I have to open my mouth way wider. The wider I open my mouth, the clearer I speak. You just I sound like you strange. have... You just sound like you have food in your mouth. Strange. Well, I fucking do. I don't know how I'm going to eat food. This thing is like in the roof of my mouth. Oh, my God. It's huge. How did they put it in? They um, they they sized me up beforehand, like days before, and then they got me in and they opened my mouth and they just pushed it in between my teeth. Oh, yeah, it really hurt. It's like it's like a full ring around my uh, my teeth because after I get this all detached and then cut in half, this, the expander expander the expander holds it together because otherwise it would just fall out of my mouth. Mm. So it's going to hold it together until the bone is fused and then fused, 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 fused his <laughs> And then they're going to turn the key to exp- Bobby, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of me? Come, please, come, please don't abandon me. I need, um, oh my God. I have a meeting later. <laughs> I have a meeting, meeting. I have a meeting later. And we're going to talk about brand deals. Yeah, I would love to. I would love to promote your product. <laughs> Who the fuck does this guy think he is? He can't even speak English. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, give me some tongue twisters, please. Okay, so I've got one. Uh huh. I'm, even I'm struggling to say it. Susie works in a shoe shine shop. Where she shines, she sits, and where she sits, she shines. Susie works in a shoe shine shop. 
she shines where she sits and she sits where she shines. I did that, that better than you. That wasn't too bad. That was you better, did than, better you. than me. Give me something hard. Uh, there's... I am very good at tongue twisters. I got good at it because I had a bit about them. Um, Iris wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch. <laughs> Give that a go. Well, that wasn't too bad, actually. So you say it. What was it? Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch. Irish wristwatch, Swiss wristwatch. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm better at it. <laughs> I can't do it. Um, there's Peter, Peter, oh, even I can't do it. Peter Piper, Peter Piper picked, picked a, a peck I can't of remember pickled it. peppers, a peck of pe- I'm reading it off a screen. Okay, look, I'm going <laughs> to, can you send me the link and I'll yeah, read some. This is not going well. Yeah, this is, um, I'm kind of get. I'm kind of, kind of getting the hang of it, but I really have to like concentrate on how I speak. Um, and it's not fun. Apparently I have this in for at least six months. Oh, oh my God. What the fuck? Six months? Do you think you could do a full podcast like this? Um, I guess we'll have to find out. Oh my God. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it sucks. Um, did you send me the link? Yes. Okay. 50 tongue, 50 tongue twisters to improve pronunciation in English. I couldn't say any of that. You know, it's normal words. It's not tongue twisters that are hard. It's just forming a coherent sentence. Coherent sentence. How much wood would a wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? Ah! Okay. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Yeah, I sound deaf. That's what I sound like. I sound like I'm a deaf guy. I saw a, I saw a kitten eating chicken in the kitchen. <laughs> um, if a dog chews, if a dog chews shoes. Whose shoes does he choose? All right. I said I was going to do 10 minutes here. I reckon I'm going to I'm going to end that and crack it. Thank you very much for listening to Speed Sundays. I'll see you in six weeks and hopefully I sound better than this. Six. I'll see you in six weeks. I'll see. I'll see you in six. I'll. I'll see you. I'll see you in. <laughs> I'll see you in six weeks. Have a shit one. Have a shit one. Bye.